Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate the 29th Sunday of Ordinary Time. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Russell Pollitt. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, with your spirit. and welcome as we come together to celebrate this 29th Sunday of the year. Wherever you are, we invite you to join in with us, especially by making the responses. The prophet Isaiah tells us today that we are called and chosen by God. At the times perhaps in our lives we notice we have failed to respond to God's call, that we have failed to acknowledge that we are the chosen of God. Let's ask the Lord now for mercy and forgiveness, but most of all, the courage to know that we are chosen. Have mercy on us, O Lord, for we have sinned against you. Show us, O Lord, your mercy. Grant us your salvation. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You have taken away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For You alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, grant that we may always conform our will to yours and serve your majesty in sincerity of heart. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah. Thus says the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have grasped, to subdue nations before him and uncover the loins of kings, to open doors before him that gates may not be closed. For the sake of my servant Jacob and Israel, my chosen, I call you by your name. I surname you, though you do not know me. I am the Lord, and there is no other besides me, there is no God. I clothe you, though you do not know me, that all may know, from the rising of the sun and from the west, that there is none besides me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response, give the Lord glory and power. Give the Lord glory and power. O oh, sing a new song to the Lord. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Tell among the nations his glory and his wonders among all the peoples. Give, Give the, the Lord, Lord glory, glory and, and power. For the Lord is great and highly to be praised, to be feared above all gods. For the gods of the nations are naught, it was the Lord who made the heavens. 
Give the Lord glory and power. Give the Lord, you families of peoples, give the Lord glory and power. Give the Lord the glory of his name. Bring an offering and enter his courts. Give the Lord glory and power. Worship the Lord in holy splendor. O tremble before him all the earth. Say to the nations, the Lord is king. He will judge the peoples in fairness. Give Give the the Lord Lord glory glory and power. The beginning of the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy. To the church of the Thessalonians, in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace to you and peace. We give thanks to God always for you all, constantly mentioning you in our prayers, remembering before our God the Father your work of faith and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brethren, beloved by God, that he has chosen you. For our gospel came to you not only in word, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with full conviction. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. You will shine as lights in the world, holding fast the word of life. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. The Pharisees went and took counsel how to entangle Jesus in his talk. And they sent their disciples to him along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are true and teach the way of God truthfully and care for no person. For you do not regard the position of people. Tell us then what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why put me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the money for the tax. And they brought him a coin. And Jesus said to them, Whose likeness and inscription is this? They said, Caesar's. Then he said to them, Render therefore to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. The Gospel of the Lord. Which realm do we live in? There seems to be two realms in today's gospel, God's and Caesar's. Give to God the things that are God and to Caesar the things that are Caesar's. An interesting detail in the answer that is prompted by by the the Pharisees to Jesus is the question of whose image is on that coin. The image being that of Caesar himself. Could it not be that we ourselves are 
those of the things that belong to God. Let me explain what I mean. If we recall the narrative in the book of Genesis, we are reminded that we are created in the image and likeness of God. We are reminded that we bear God's image. We belong to God. And therefore, we are asked to give back to God what belongs to God. This account in Matthew's Gospel invites us to face, it seems to me, some important questions about the living out of our Christian faith today. Are we simply just Sunday Christians, giving to God maybe an hour a week at church, and then getting on with our lives, making money, watching television, going after fancy cars, eating splendid food. Maybe we live our daily lives in fear, seeing the world as us and them. Or maybe we live our daily lives wishing things had turned out better. Maybe we live our daily lives fighting to hold on to a relationship or even struggling to get out of an unhealthy relationship. And somehow our lives, our daily lives, do not belong to the realm of God. We leave it to the so-called religious professionals to belong to God, and we get on with our busy days. And so we see ourselves perhaps much more in the realm of Caesar's world, belonging to Caesar's world. But what happens if we try it the other way around? Perhaps we are so serious about our Christian faith and spirituality that we try not to get involved in our world. We stay away from enjoyment and worry about worldly things. We want to be uncorrupted by this world. Throughout history, there are marvelous examples of people who chose to do this. The desert hermits, for example. Cloistered monks and nuns. The great mystics. A penny for Caesar, some say, and all the rest for God. But if we push this too far, however, everything of Caesar must go because it is not of God. And on the other hand, God has to go away because science and secularism and our busy lives are more important. We can even push this a little bit further. We can spend our days condemning those who we think do not shape up to the Christian ideal. People that we judge and we want to send to hell because of whatever it is that they hold true. Just last week, a 15 year old who died in 2006 was beatified in Rome, an Italian. Carlo Acutis. And he died of leukemia, but interestingly enough, he is known for the way that he chose to use the internet. His mother said of him, he was the light side of the dark side of the web. Don't many of us spend much time condemning others on social media, telling them, of their fate. Jesus makes this statement to settle the argument that was posed 
to him by the Pharisees. And perhaps the key to understanding what Jesus really says is asking, can God and Caesar coexist? It is not one or the other, but both. I want to invite you this morning to consider three things. The first one is, are we not like that coin, bearing the image of God, and so meant to be spent for God's purposes in Caesar's world? God wants to spend us where there is poverty, where there is lack of interest or investment. And so can we see ourselves in God's image and allow ourselves to be spent in God's world? You know, so often the image that we hold about ourselves says a lot about the image of God. And the image of God that we have says a lot about the image of ourselves. And today we are reminded that we are made in the image and likeness of God. And what does that mean for you? But there is more to this. And the second thing I invite you to ponder is that life has a way of making us crinkly, of soiling us, of maybe even tearing the edges, of getting us dirty like money gets soiled and dirty and torn. But a coin or a note, despite being passed from hand to hand and getting soiled and dirty, never loses its value. We, made in the image and likeness of God, despite whatever life throws at us, never lose our value. In spite of the voices within, perhaps, that tell us that we are not worth much. In spite of the setbacks of life. In spite of the losses, the flatness, the sin, the broken relationships, the disillusionment. In spite of all these, we have infinite value because we bear the image of God. And today, the Lord invites us to come to the realization that we have more value than perhaps we ourselves even admit. And the third and final thing I want to say is it does not end there either. Because God puts us, He puts you, His money in the world to be holy, to be friends with the things of Caesar, to work in the world of sin, in the world of frailty, in the world of brokenness, to reveal God's way and God's love in Caesar's world. Notice Jesus uses the word belong. Belong not in a possessive way, but in a way that we are felt, loved, and are able to love. We belong, and because we belong, we are asked to give ourselves to God. And that means also to the world that God created. And so we are asked to go into Caesar's world, to go into Caesar's palaces, to walk the dirty roads and show everyone what it really means to be made in the image and likeness of God. That's what God invites us to do. Bring value to a world that often we condemn as valueless. And so which realm do we live in? The truth be told, we are invited to live fully in both.
let's together now make a profession of faith as we pray the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. We have heard God's word, and we are invited now to bring before our God, in whose image and likeness we are created, our needs. And so we pray for our needs and the needs of our world. For the grace to know that we have infinite value, that we are sinners loved by God because we are made in the image and likeness of God. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For growth in our commitment to God, that we may know God as the one and only Lord in our lives and fully dedicate ourselves to God's service. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For the conversion of our hearts, that the false gods of power, prestige, pleasure, and security may be dethroned so that the God of mercy, compassion, forgiveness, and justice may receive our service. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. That we who bear the image and likeness of God will not be afraid to be spent to reveal God's love, compassion, and care in Caesar's palaces, in the impoverished roads and spaces in our country and world. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For greater trust, that we may be confident of God's providence and love that provides for all our needs, even during challenges and sufferings. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all who join us on this broadcast today, wherever you may be, that God would console and reassure you and that you would know and feel God's loving care. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. In a moment of silence, let's now bring our own prayers before the Lord. For these we pray, Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord our God, these are our prayers. We make them in humility through Jesus Christ, your Son and our risen Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, fruit of the earth and work of our human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of our human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Let's pray, sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice and the sacrifice and efforts of all our lives may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Creator. Amen. 
May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant us, Lord, we pray, a sincere respect for your gifts, that through the purifying action of your grace we may be cleansed by the very mysteries we serve. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift, since our praises add nothing to your greatness, but profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread. And giving you thanks, he broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the cup. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by your Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Buti, our Bishop, Duncan, his assistant, and all the clergy and all who minister to your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours for ever and ever. Amen. Let's pray together now in the words that the Lord Jesus himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days. That by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who set your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, with your spirit. and let's for a moment pray for peace, peace in our own hearts, in our families, in our community, and in our world. And we pray together, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. My sisters, my brothers, behold Jesus, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. How blessed are we who are called to share in the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring all of us, our family, our friends, and all people to life everlasting. Amen. Although you cannot receive physical communion with us now, we invite you into a moment of spiritual communion. The great medieval theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, defines spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament and a loving embrace as though we had already received him. His words are echoed by the great mystic and fellow doctor of the church, St. Teresa of Avila, who wrote, When you do not receive communion and do not attend Mass, you can make a spiritual communion, which is a most beneficial practice. By it, the love of God will be greatly impressed on you. At this moment, we invite you to focus on Christ and your longing for union with Him. Express your desire to feel His grace coursing through you, giving you strength and courage, particularly in these difficult times. In your desiring union, you are united with us and to Christ. In this moment, we experience the reality that is already here.
Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that benefiting from participation in heavenly things, we may be helped by what you give us in this present age and prepared for the gifts that are eternal. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go now in the peace of Christ, glorifying God by your lives. Thanks be to God.